What's good, YouTube? Mario Devon back with yet another video, all right? We are here once again, yet another week, trying to bring you some videos, talking about the setup. I said I haven't given you the full tour of the setup, but soon, soon, that is coming. Be patient, that is coming. This is the first official video, I think, in this setup, in this space, but I wanna walk you through my top-down setup and just five different ways I do my top-down setup. Now, some of my favorite people that do top-down setups are usually tech YouTubers, like Justin TSC, Unbox Therapy, Shout out to Lou Hensel Tiger, and of course the legendary, the infamous MKBHD. Now, obviously, there are other YouTubers like you know content creators that are reviewing cameras. They do like unboxings and things of that matter. I love that kind of stuff too. But I'm gonna show you in this video five ways that I do a top-down setup depending on what I'm showing you all. Okay, there are three main things you're gonna need at a top-down setup. Number one is gonna be something to actually mount your camera up above you, right? Something that is safe, secure, so you don't have your camera on the floor broken. There are some of the most intricate setups I've ever seen. I've even seen people like mount a red cinema camera, not a Komodo, like a red Gemini on top of like th the world. I'm just not that bold. That's not what I'm going to do. I like to use my Canon R6, R5, Sony FX3 right here. What's wild is I have a Sony FX6 over here. I'm not mounting that above nothing. Absolutely not. Unless unless someone paid me enough to do it. But again, the first thing you're gonna need is something to actually mount your camera above you. Number two is going to be a table, something, a desk, like anything that you can kind of create your flat lay look where you can have your object, have it laying flat, make sure that it looks good, it accents it well, that kind of thing. So I'm gonna walk you through five different looks that I like to use. Third and equally as important as the first two is going to be lighting. You wanna make sure that two things are well lit, all right? Number one, you wanna make sure the object, whatever it is you're reviewing whatever it is you're showing to people you want to make sure it looks good on camera then number two you want to make sure that the actual tabletop the, the the flat lay area you want to make sure it's properly lit too so let's walk through all five of those setups all right i want to make it very versatile for you i want to make it very optional for you because i don't know what type of gear you have but i want to make sure that whatever gear you already have that you can use in this setup setup number one the coffee table okay the coffee table where you drink your coffee and you invite guests over some people like to put their feet up on okay that thing that can be used in the top down setup with that is something that most of y'all probably already got at home for me in this example i'm gonna use my end table i like my end table it has a little marble top you don't have to buy an end table like this but i love the design it fits the aesthetic of my room but it also is very practical for when i want to do a very simple and very elegant top down setup okay what's cool about a coffee table is it's very low that means that you can get something like a tripod that can actually mount horizontally and is low enough that the tripod has enough height to make it work. So in this example, I'm using a simple, easy, affordable k &F concept tripod. Now I have attached a newer base plate just because I wanted something that would have the Manfrotto base plate. Other than that, it's a very simple, easy, and very accessible k &F concept Amazon findable tripod. Listen, I know y'all be on Amazon buying everything and anything. You ain't got no business buying me too. So what I do is I make sure I raise that tripod as high as I can go. From there, I mount the camera on that tripod. In this example, I'm using the Canon R5. That is one of my favorite cameras to use. I think it's the most versatile camera ever. We'll talk about that in another video because I can already see the comments. And to really make your overlay the most balanced, you want to shoot in log. Go ahead and shoot in that 10-bit log, okay? So we got two things already. We got the table for the flat lay, and we also have a tripod, something that can go over that flat lay area so you can create your top down. Last thing you need is lighting, okay? I don't know what lighting you have, but if you have something like a Godox SL60W, that works. If you have a uh, uh, the, the, the aperture MC, the small things, they can work too, but you really need to make sure you provide a good amount of balanced light. Make sure you diffuse the light too. I'm gonna give you a quick pointer, all right? Through this video, I'm gonna give you pointers to just like spice up that look, make sure it looks good. When you use your light, you wanna make sure you give it enough space away from your overlay. And the reason why is because you'll get that glare. You don't want the glare, okay? We wanna avoid glares because as soon as you get the glare, it just, it just you're gonna see it in the corner of the frame, you don't, it's, it's gonna look uneven. You wanna make sure your flat lay looks even as if there's no light there. I prefer to use a grid because I wanna control the light, but I also wanna make sure it's not bleeding out. I wanna make sure it's focused. It's focused on the overlay that I'm trying to create. Another thing I recommend is bringing your light as low as you can so that you don't have that overhead glare because you'll get the overhead glare in the item that you're showing off and you can get the overhead glare on your actual tabletop or your desk or your coffee table, whatever you're using. Another thing I would recommend, and this applies to 
every top down setup is you have a light on one side what happens just like sunlight if you have a light casting you're going to create a shadow you want to fill in those shadows with an additional light something not as strong but something that can just fill in those shadows now if you don't have a light if you have a reflector use that if you have something like a v flat i keep the v flats on me at home now that little lighting trick applies to a lot of different situations that's just a little way you can reflect a little bit of light you can bounce that light so you can get an additional feel on the other side of whatever the person is the object whatever you're trying to present i've even gotten very desperate once where i had a light on one side and i was like hey man uh you got a white t-shirt in the car yes i do and i did that hold the white t-shirt up it's gonna do the same thing now the second setup is a little bit unorthodox okay because we're gonna take it to the kitchen all right a lot of you have kitchen floors i mean i'm i'm, I'm sure a lot of you have kitchen counters okay you may want to use that that is a good place to like set up a flat lay is a flat surface and it's usually not just a a simple texture it's got a little little fancy texture usually on the kitchen counter and you alight it the same way make sure you're not getting any reflections you want to make sure you're providing enough light and the same things now the thing that's going to be different is you're going to want to use a c-stand all right because you're going to need to get a little bit higher than your coffee table now shout out to peter mckinnon years ago he went through this setup that setup involves your c-stand you want to make sure you use the spigot with that spigot you have a boom arm with your c-stand you're going to take that spigot and you're going to put it into the boom arm of that c-stand from there you're going to add a ball head the choice that most of us use is going to be a joby gorilla pod ball head another thing i recommend if you're going to use this setup just because you want to make sure your setup is balanced and that your camera doesn't tip over and fall on the floor and die you want to make sure you use a sandbag i prefer using sandbags just for safety you can put the sandbags at the bottom of the c-stand but you can also also hang them on the boom arm to make sure that there's like you know no shakiness and the, and the camera sturdy you want to make sure that everything is safe you know because you got thousands of dollars mounting over your head and you don't want it to fall over and you know have a really bad day now third setup is all going to apply a very similar way as far as like lighting okay but this is the table i love this table because i can do this with you i can do podcasts on this table but i love to have this nice surface the, the, the thing about this wood it's like it's, it's it's custom i'm gonna be honest i'm a bougie kind of guy so it is custom wood the top down is going to look even better when you have something that you can spend a little bit of money on but i'm not telling you to go spend the money i'm just saying you know you add a little spice to your life all right go ahead and treat yourself boo the lighting is going to be the same thing all right you want to make sure you're using a grid soft box and you want to make sure you get that light as low as possible or you make sure that your light placement is far away not too far but far enough away that you don't get a glare okay that's the one thing i don't want in my top down shots is i don't want a glare on the edge of the frame like i just want it to be a very even even tone now with this top down setup i do like to use a c-stand with that c-stand i like to put a brace on the side of the c-stand and then on that brace i like to attach a monitor i love being able to see my top down setups because i'm going to be looking i want to make sure my hand placement is good i want to make sure where you know if i'm unboxing something i want to make sure i'm cutting in the right place i want to make sure the product is in the right place so that you all can see it the way i like to fill in shadows when i'm in this room i like to add an additional light again it doesn't have to be the same as your bigger softbox source of light your main source of light it can be like uh, one of those small aperture like led lights can just be something just to cast that shadow my choice is i like to mount a nanlite pavo tube horizontally all right from there i put it align it right with the table and then that casts the light directly on whatever the product is and it fills in all of the shadows all right so the last two setups are actually going to be a two-in-one all right it's going to be a duo okay the, the, i didn't mean to do that but the, the product is actually called v flat duo it's a duo board okay like i, I didn't mean to do that that's, that wasn't even in the script that was just off the fly that just I, that, you know what that means i'm a youtuber i'm a youtuber so with the v flat duo boards okay they're actually created for food photography but they are another tabletop that i like to use obviously i have this tabletop here but what if i want a different color so the duo boards come in handy for that so y'all think that i got multiple tables but i don't i ain't got the same i'm just you know deceived I know. So you're going to light the duo boards the same way you would light any other top down setup. When you're lighting it, you want to make sure you get enough space. You don't want to glare. You want to make sure you're getting even light across the board. You're going to still be using that C-Stand setup. Again, I love that setup. You don't have to change your thing. It's crazy because you really got three setups in one. All you have to do is just change the background. All you have to do is either take the V flat away or add the duo board and then flip the duo board. You got three setups right there that just look a little different. What's also cool about that 
duo board is that you don't need this table. You remember we talked about coffee tables. You can lay that duo board on your coffee table and then you have something else you can use with your tripod setup. I'm just trying to give you all the tricks and do hickeys. Now again, you know we have to even out the light. You wanna make sure you're filling in those shadows. Again, you wanna get that even light across the board because when you're showing your products, when you have one light on one side, it is just like the sun. You're gonna have that light casting down. You're gonna create a shadow. We wanna fill in the shadows on the other side. And that's where my Nanlite Pavel tube comes in for me. So there you go. I really hope this is giving you some, some options. All right, I hope this is really opening your eyes about the behind the scenes things of how people get top down setups. Obviously there are other ways to do it too, but these are like simple ways to do it because like uh, for me, I watch a lot of YouTube videos. And I love how people can add a little spice to their videos with these top down setups just presenting a product to you. I love that. Unbox Therapy has, has so many subscribers because of that infamous, that infamous look of having that top down setup. All right. Brands appreciate that top down setup when you're working with them. Clients will appreciate that top down setup. And guess what? Us fellow YouTubers, we just, we appreciate that little sauce. So I hope this has helped you and given you a little bit of guidance of how to do it yourself. So please like, comment, subscribe to your boy. Thank you so much for watching and please, please stay updated. I will see you all in the next video. Peace out.